this, folks. Okay, so before each meeting, I have to read the following statement. Pursuant to Governor Baker's emergency orders regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting of the East Hampton Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of meetings of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the orders. As a reminder, anyone who would like to participate in this meeting while it is in progress may do so by connecting to Zoom with the meeting room and password as listed in the meeting agenda. Okay. So we call to order the meeting for the City of East Hampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Uh, the, uh, do we have approval for the meeting minutes from February 26th and March and May 27th, 2020? I move that we approve both sets of minutes. Okay, can I get a second? I second. Okay. And Thanks. with that, we need to do a roll call vote. A roll call vote. All right. Linda? Yes. Tony? Yep. Uh, who else do we have online? I don't even know who else we have online here. Uh, John? Across. Ah, there we go. Lindsay? Yes. Okay. And uh, Linda, and I guess myself. Oh, Jared? Well, yeah, we got to unmute you. So, Jared, yeah. you're, you're yes. yes, okay, and then I say yes. Okay, and we also have a new member, Steve Litwin, who was not present at those meetings. Um, All right. Uh, let me go back here. And, all right, so is there anyone from the public who's interested in speaking who's not on the board uh, hearing list this evening? Okay, so with that, we will call uh, our only hearing this evening, NSA Property Holdings, LLC. Oops, you just Sorry. disappeared that. Sorry, I'll bring it right back. That's okay. There we go. Uh, doing business is move in self-storage, seeking a variance to the frontage and back the front yard setback requirements for construction of additional self storage units in accordance with section 13.1 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance. Subject property is located at 9 Coleman Road slash Main Street Rear. Parcel ID is 164 8 and zoned industrial I. Okay, so who is going to be speaking on that behalf? Um, I will be uh, Ellen Fryman with Shot Schwartz and Fenton, 1441 Main Street in Springfield. And uh, I will introduce the other members of the team here tonight. Um, we have the um, president and CEO of um, NSA Property Holdings LLC move in, doing business as move in self storage, John Gilliland. Um, and we have the director of construction, Jeff Murdorf, and also uh, Berkshire engineer, uh, architect Jeff Squire. So they may, if necessary be available to answer questions. Oh, and I will, uh, Mark Esposito is also an associate with Shaw Schwartz and Fenton. He's joining us tonight too. Okay. So, uh, so um, move in self storage, uh, NSA property holdings uh, purchased the property uh, about just about a year ago, September of 2019, and uh, took over an existing self storage business that was at the site. And things are going well there. And so they would like to expand and add additional self storage units and uh, do plans up. And then uh, uh, it turns out that uh, we have a unique situation in that the property is basically sliced in half by um, a, a town line uh, so that half the property's in East Hampton, the other half is in South Hampton. So um, because of the property line, we do not have uh, sufficient frontage in East Hampton to satisfy the bylaw, nor uh, frontage from the uh, front yard from um, the building, the last building to the, um, to the street line. And uh, Jamie, if you're able to put up the plan, we can, um, you can see what the situation is. 
Yep. So, um, so we need to, this is necessitating us to uh, be here tonight to um, request two variances, one for frontage and then one for the front yard setback. So the diagonal line across the, the property is the, is the property line. And then the shaded in um, rectangles are the proposed new storage units that would be added. Um, so we do uh, sa satisfy as best as anybody can satisfy the requirements of a variance that are set forth in section 13.11 of the zoning ordinance. Um, it did provide a narrative of how we do um, comply with and satisfy those requirements enabling us to get these variances. Um, and I'll just go through um, those requirements and how we satisfy them. So the first one is that it's owing to the shape um, topography soil conditions of the of the property and it's unique to the property and not to affecting the zoning district generally. And this is a very unique situation um, spe specific to this parcel and not generally to the zoning district. You know, the fact that we have a, a, a slice through the property of the of a of the town line. Um, so that um, so we do meet the the requirement that it's relating to the also there we do have uh, wetlands and uh, on the on the uh, primarily well you, you see the the flagging so it's a uh, generally on the um, Southampton property uh, frustrating our ability to um, to develop in that area there's also um, the based on the topography uh, it dictates where we can expand so again we're relating to the shape to the soil conditions to topography um, we uh, we are here tonight for, for the variance. Uh, also a literal enforcement of the provisions would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise. And um, again, we wouldn't be able to expand if we aren't able to um, uh, get the, the uh, variances, we wouldn't be able to do anything because we wouldn't meet the frontage um, or the, you know, certainly the frontage and then the, the front yard base on what we want to do. And we, and we really want to add, you know, to expand to this plan because of um, just making it more economic um, and successful for our client. So uh, for the business. So, um, so we meet that uh, requirement. Um, also that the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. And, um, there's really, I mean, it, it, there's no detriment. There's already a business there. It's, um, it's it, the town's already approved it. There's a special permit that allows it. So um, adding to that business would not uh, be detrimental. Um, and granting the variances is not, I mean, we, the town is already, you know, in their ordinance, you have what the, set, what the front yard setback is and what the frontage requirement is. And, but for the town line, um, we would meet those requirements. If all the property was in East Hampton, we wouldn't even be here. So there's really no detriment um, to, to allowing these variances uh, because we would otherwise you know, meet those requirements. And then uh, lastly, um, without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the ordinance. Uh, and again, um, you know, as far as the purpose of the ordinance uh, that you provide projects that are safe and um, for the, protect the property values, protect the general welfare of um, the residents of East Hampton. Uh, again, there's nothing here that would uh, derogate in, in frustrating those purposes at all. Um, in fact, um, in one of the cases that we cited that where they you know, allow a uh, you know, support a variance in the case where the property is located in two towns, uh, that, ki that case cited and said, no purpose of the um, denying the variance would be served here. So again, no, no purpose would, um, there would be no purpose in denying it because there would be no, no furthering of the intent and um, you know, benefits of the ordinance here. So, um, so we, I think we laid out, um, you know, that we satisfy the requirements. And I'd additionally like to just point out that when you look at the definitions of the of front yard setback and the and um, frontage, your um, ordinance has a diagram. 
and all the references to the setback are from a street line. There's nothing in the ordinance at all that refers to the distance from a property, from a town line. It's all street line. So, um, you know, the, but we're, but, you know, so again, but for uh, the town line, we wouldn't be here. Um, and, um, and again, we do, we are, we do, if we were, you know, if the definition was street line or town line, that would be one thing. But the fact that the definition is to street line, we do meet those requirements. We do have the sufficient frontage and we do have the sufficient setback from the, from the street line to, to the, to the building. So, um, uh, so, you know, in summary, I would say that um, we're, uh, we would, uh, you know, not be, there would not be anything that's detrimental to the town by granting the variance that there's been case, cases that have supported a town, uh, the ZBA granting variances in this unique situation that we satisfy the, the four prongs and, um, and but for that, the splitting of the property, we wouldn't be here. And we would very much um, ask that you uh, favorably decide on granting the variances so that we can uh, expand this property and be another successful business in East Hampton. And I will point out that we do, stu, still do need a special permit so that we will be back um, before the planning board and we would be, um, you know, there'd be another opportunity to look at this project. Um, but this is, we need to go through this step before we, before we get there. So we're available for any questions. No, I can't. Okay, Linda, what's your question? I, if I remember correctly in something I read, the city of East Hampton created this building lot, correct? During a subdivision? Um, there, there was, was there's a technical note. Um, there was an a &R that was approved by the planning board in 2011 or 2012. Um, and that separated the property because originally it was developed as a planned business development that included the property to the north, which is 422 Main Street. The ANR subdivided the lots. I, I'm not sure if it was two lots under common ownership at the time, but the ANR in 2011 or 2012 reconfigured the lot lines so that way all of the buildings were all of the the um, self-storage buildings were on one lot and all of the remainder of the businesses were on the other lot. So we actually created this problem, the city. Um, I don't normally like granting variances so that a development, your only access is in another city because the city of East Hampton is required to provide police and fire and in some cases, school buses for kids. But in this case, we are so close to the East Hampton line and there are two roads there. I don't have a problem with these variants because you can get there from here. Mm -hmm. So our access is in East Hampton, so. Correct. And, and now the property that you are accessing through, that is the current Verizon building or whatever it is there? Right, and there's um, a easement. There's, a there's easement an easement for access. Okay, I just want to make sure there's a you know existing easement in place for that for that access mm -hmm. to the property. Okay, and let me just go to the next screen. Okay. Um, and you know you're meeting all the wetland requirements, setbacks, everything like that. We're going to the Conservation Commission um, that an NOI, an NOI has been uh, filed. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, if it, if it wasn't for the fact, you know, it, the reality is most people think that the frontage of the property is on Coleman Road. They don't realize that it's on Main Street. And, and as you stated, you know, if the frontage of, of the property was on Coleman Road, there would be no issue with this. Um, now, do you, are you also submitting a, an application to the town of Southampton for the Correct. property that, that you're working on there as well? 
Yes. Okay. And I guess we could sit here and, and you know, I don't want to say argue the fact, but, but come up with, you know, if they approve it, we will, or if we approve it, they will, but I'm sure there's some sort of mutual agreement there. And are, have you, have you filed, have you been in front of their planning department or zoning board of appeals yet? Not yet. Okay. I think all indications are that it will go okay there, so. Well, and, and a majority of the work is, is in East Hampton. That's you know, correct. It's all in East Hampton, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a little, just that little corner there. Yeah, just a little, right, the corners of a couple of the buildings, but. Okay. All right. Um, and is there going to be fencing around? Okay, yeah, there is fencing all the way around it. Okay. Um, you know. Does any other member of the board have any questions, concerns I'd like to address? Nope. Oh. No. Not here. Okay. Um, so, you know, the one thing I do want to, you know, read over is that, you know, there's a technical memo that came out from Jamie uh, that states that under the ordinance, frontage of the, in the industrial district is required to be 140 feet along the existing road and provide both rights of access and potential vehicular access across that lot line to a potential building site. Because the property does not have any frontage in East Hampton, no further development may occur in East Hampton unless a variance is granted. So basically, you know, they went as far as they could without a variance in our granting from us. Uh, da, da, da. All right. And everybody else, no, no, Jamie, did you hear anything else from anybody as of this, as of now? I know that when sure. you printed this. There were no comments. Um, we did not receive any comments from uh, planning board or um, building commissioner or conservation commission. They were okay. sent copies of the application. Um, so, but they not responded. Okay. And and as uh, attorney Freeman said, there's still um, after the variance is. If, if a variance is granted, they would still need to go to the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board uh, for additional permits. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I guess, you know, is there any other you know, does anybody else have anything they'd like to say concerning this before we close the public part of, part of it here? As far as the bike path goes, is that fairly close to that? It is, but it doesn't affect the bike path in any way. You can see the bike path travels all the way along the, what is that, the southern portion of the property? Am I correct in that? Orientation? Just, just concern with pedestrians and the public in general. Uh, I John think. May. Oh, who's that? Just John Gilliland. I just say something just quickly. Uh, I, I would. I would. Uh, we surely would appreciate a positive vote tonight. And we. What, what we're trying to do is provide an office here. That part of the long building that you're looking at, the one uh, closest to Coleman Road, that will be an office at the end of that building. We want to provide an office there for people who want to come in when we can obviously, uh, but come in and, and conduct business face to face. That's the goal here. Plus the fact that we need to put in some more self storage. We are actually full with this facility over 95% full. So we have more demand that we would like to supply. So we'd appreciate a positive vote and thank you all for your questions and, and your time after after dinner tonight. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um. Uh, Well, all right. Anybody else? I move to close the public hearing. Okay, then I will uh, accept that. 
Uh, can I get a second? Second it. All right. Okay, so discussion. Um, just to can we do a roll call vote on that. Oh, okay. Uh, Tony? Yep. Lindsay? Yes. Linda? Yes. Steve? Yes. Jared? Yes. Okay, okay. And I say yes. Okay, close the public hearing. Okay. Board, we can discuss this. Uh, I think that, you know, they have to get through Conservation Commission and they have to get through, past the Planning Board as well. But by way of the fact that it, it is abutting a town line and that is basically the only thing that's causing it to be in front of us for all intents and purposes. It's a unique piece of property. I feel that it meets the, the requirements uh, to issue a variance. Uh, and I wanna know if anybody else has any other questions or concerns with what I'm saying. No. I was going to say, I agree. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. Well, well let, me, let me start back here. Jared? Oh, I was just going to say, I agree uh, with you, John. Um, I think the underlying purpose of the, of the frontage um, and, the, and the other requirements are met here, given the, the layout, with, you know, where it's located next to the road. And the only issue here is the town line. Um, so I think that that meets the requirements. Okay, moving down the line. Steve, welcome to the board. Oh, here. Thank you. <laughs> you know, one day we'll be able to have meetings in person and we'll actually know what people look like. But you know, until then, we'll all just be pixelated pieces of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Linda, you kind of stated it coming right out of the gate. Anything else you'd like to add? Nope. Okay, uh, Lindsay. Nothing to add. Okay, and Tony. I'm going with it. Okay, so my my thought is we do have to put a couple, um, uh, you know, clauses, provisions, whatever we want to say in the in the approval, in that you know it needs to pass the approval of the planning board, and the. Uh, Conservation Commission, as well as the town of Southampton, which I don't think is unreasonable on anybody's account. Right. Um, and provided that that all happens, then I don't see a problem. So let's go back and find which screen I'm on here. Okay, here we go here. John, do you want me to put anything else on the shared screen? Or are we done with that for now? I think we're good with that. I, I learned that if I zoom off my iPad, I can use my regular computer to re read everything up. And yeah. All right. Uh, so so was that a, John, was that a formal condition that you were proposing or was that I, just- I'm, I'm, just, just I'm, I'm discussing it and, and I will put it in our formal, in, and I'm gonna kind of try to put it all in one big word here. Um, yeah. Because if the, I guess it would be um, if, if there was a discussion about the conditions, if if that before you make a motion, that'd be helpful. Okay, so uh, board, do we agree? And I'll do this in a roll call. If we can just, you know, I will I will call your name and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm just going to read. I'm going to read all of them out loud, and then we will. Uh, then I'll do the roll call vote. It is uh, planning board approval, the conservation commission approval, town of Southampton, is there anybody else that I, did I miss anybody there, to, uh, Jamie? I think those were the three, right? Right, and, the, and they're required by the ordinance to go through those the anyway. different for, or, or anyways so um right you know. do you think we need to make those conditions given that it's already required well because it, it, it's a timing thing so the variance needs to be approved before right. they can go to those right. boards for the for their approvals right so if you condition it if you, if you condition it on those approvals then then they won't have the variance in place 
That's true. So, okay. I don't think the conditions okay, so are with, with that said, then I guess we can't. We can't put in it. We can't put right. those provisions. Right. We have a chicken and egg situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. Um, all right. Then let me pull back up. You were very kind in getting all those. Uh, let's go back here. So I will make a motion that we approve the request for a variance. Well, we have two variances, or is it a variance and a special permit? Two, two variances. Vari two variances. So we'll do variance number one, which is the frontage. All right. And you know, so approve the variance for use of the property based on the, the issue of frontage, um, that the, the property, since it doesn't technically front Coleman Road and is affected by the division, the municipal boundary, that that meets that requirement. Uh, and that the financial high, hardship uh, would be, you know, basically the rest of the property is unbuildable if we don't grant the permit. Uh, there's no, you know, it's an industrial area. Um, I guess that is one question. Is the property in Southampton zoned industrial as well? I don't yes. know what, the, I don't know what their zoning is. Um, and frankly, it, um, it doesn't really matter to East Hampton what their zoning is. Um, you know, like, just because their their zoning doesn't really affect us, and even though we border it, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah right. okay. um, <laughs> you know, it's sort of like if if it was zoned residential in Southampton, that's not the the East Hamptons' concerns; that's the applicant's concern. And if they okay. needed to get a variance to that from Southampton, then that'd be on their yeah. Judging but, by the things around it in Southampton, I would say it is in zoned industrial. Uh, am I, is it zoned industrial, I think? Jeff, is it? Jeff. It's highway, it's highway business. Yeah, so it's it's not industrial, but it's, you know, the next, next step in the line. Okay. All right. Um, so number three, the desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. I feel that it, we've met that requirement uh, because we're, you know, uh, it's permitted in an industrial zone and this is an industrial zone. And without nullifying or substantial derogation from the intent or purpose of the ordinance, um, there again, it is industrial property and the only thing that's holding it back is that it doesn't have frontage in our town or city, whatever we are these days. Okay, the front yard setback. Um, so, do I, Jamie, do I need to approve that first one? I think if you just make the finding, discuss the findings um, as presented to the board and everyone's agreement that those are the, the that those findings are valid, then um, then we can go to the variant. We can approve the variances in one vote. Okay. All right. So then, moving on to the front setback. Then, uh, same standard should apply that you already just went through. What's that? I would think the same findings would apply yep. that you just went through, so we don't have to repeat them all. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're basically the same findings for both cases. Okay. All right. Okay. You need more information, Jamie? That's good. Okay, can I get a second? I'll we'll second it. All right, Tony seconds. All right, we'll roll call vote. Let's start all the way at the end here. 
scroll across. Jared? Yes. Dave? Yes. Linda? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. And Tony? Yes. And I say yes as well. Great. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. Well, Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Okay. All right. Uh, so, you know, obviously things are moving a little slower these days because of COVID, but we're trying to get things written up and, and out as timely as we can. Uh, do you have an appointment with the uh, Planning Board or Conservation Commission? Um, we were told that we could submit our application just based on the approval, so because we'll have time between our submission and the hearing, so, um, so we're going to be able to move forward. Okay. Based on your vote tonight. Okay. All right. And Jamie, obviously those applications are going to come through, you know, the planning board will come through your office anyway, so you'll be able to say that it did get approved. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, are we still looking at a few, few days to get it written and then? Yeah, I think it's, uh, we generally say about two weeks to write up the decision and then there's a 20 day appeal period after the decisions filed with the city clerk. So. Okay. All right. And you'll be notified we'll on that. Get it, we'll record it. And we'll, so. Great. Okay. That was a deal. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, we thank you for coming or being here this evening. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have, a good night. Have a good evening. Yep. You too. All right, boys, right. you can stay on. Why well, make a motion to adjourn? Uh, um, can bef before, uh, can, I, can I interrupt? Yep. Yeah, of course. Um, so we had scheduled the next zoning board meeting was supposed to be September 23rd. We have not received any applications. So that meeting will be uh, canceled. Um, the next meeting will then be October 28th, the next scheduled meeting. Okay. And I will let you know um, if anything comes in. Um, I'll let you know by email, a um, couple weeks notice, and just poll everyone just to make sure that that date is still uh, works for everyone. Okay. Um, also, I don't know if... Um, Everyone had a chance to meet Steve Litwin. He's our newest Zoning Board of Appeals member. Um, Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, nice to meet everybody. I'm, I apologize for being a little late into the meeting. Um, I could not get on through my computer. I was having issues getting on edge. I could not connect. So thank goodness I had my phone as a backup. So by the time I got that booted up, uh, I was a few minutes into it. So again, I apologize, but I want to thank everybody for letting me be being part of their team. Seems like a great team and I'm certainly anxious to help in any way I can. I've worked for Daniel O'Connell Sons for 36 years. I was their safety director. So if I have, if I could offer you any input in that area, I'd be more than happy to help out. Oh, welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. So with that, we will see everyone again in this lovely little world of pixelation, October 28th, because we're not coming back to the office anytime soon, as they say. Nope. <laughs> Although, Jamie, you're sitting in your office, so. I, I am, but it's close to everybody else. So uh, I, I just read we're municipal buildings still closed until now December 31st. Yes. So we will not be having in-person board meetings till 2021. If, 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 if then. If then. <laughs> well, hopefully, I'll have my, hopefully I'll have my technical issues uh, straightened out by then. <laughs> Everyone have a great Labor Day. Bye. There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. One. I, I made one. Okay. I'm second second. It. Okay. All in favor? Yes. All right. Favor. All right. Have yourselves a happy, uh, happy September. We'll see you in October. All right. Bye. All right. Bye now. Bye.